down for me. All right. I want you to understand something. Luke tells us Mary was a prostitute, possessed of seven devils. And into her life steps a man named Jesus. Okay? He doesn't see a woman in shame. He doesn't see a woman bound. He sees a woman to be freed, to be set free, to be given hope. And the Bible says he cast the demons out. Imagine for a moment what that does for Mary. This is a woman who's been looked down on. This is a woman who has been uh, just ashamed. She's, good women turn away from her. Good men don't want to be around her. But here's this rabbi who steps into her life and sets her free. She's got hope. She's got hope once again. Maybe life's got something for me. And then she watches them drag him out to Calvary. And she watches as they pound spikes through his wrists and in his feet and hoist him into heaven. And she watches her hope die. She watches him breathe his last. She watches as they take a spear and they shove it in his side. Blood and water flows. He's not coming back. He is dead as dead could be. The one that brought her hope. The one that set her free. He's gone, Brad. Gone. They can't even, they can't even take care of him. They, they can't even bury him properly. She loves him. He set her free. But they have to pull him off the cross and throw him in a grave. They put some spices on him. But it's guys that do that. You know they don't do it right. Right, ladies? Few of you agree. So on Monday, what's Mary doing? She's got her spices. She's going to go to the grave. And she's, her hope is dead. But one last thing I can do. I can make sure that he's buried properly. I can make sure he gets the honor. And then maybe I can pick up the pieces of my life and move on without him. And there she is. She gets there. Hope is dead. Now some of you in here, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You had hope. You had dreams. And they are dead. You didn't ask to be abused. You didn't ask to be abandoned. You didn't ask to be violated. But your dreams are dead. Your hope is gone. And you can stand at the tomb of your hope. And weep. What am I going to do now? I had a chance. It's gone. I had a chance. It's never coming back. Some of you in here know. There's some of you who you don't have a clue what I'm talking about. But somebody in here, you know what I'm saying. Because you are Mary. You've been in her shoes. Society looks down on you. Everything you've done goes wrong. It just all falls apart. Your hope is dead. She comes to bury him, and she can't even do that right because the tomb is open. And you know what? The angels, they tell her he's risen. It goes right over her head. She doesn't even notice that they said he was risen. So all she can focus on is my hope is gone, my hope is dead. And there's a man there. It's a garden. And so she makes the assumption this is a gardener. And there's a man there. And she says, tell me where his body is at. I just, I just want to honor him. I just want to bury him so I can get on with my life. And that gardener says one word. He 
he looks right at Mary and he calls her name. He says, Mary. She's thinking nobody cares. She's thinking nobody understands. She thinks there's nobody around her. Society degrades her. Her, her life is beating her down. But she hears somebody call her name and she looks up and she realizes it's not a gardener, Gary, it's Jesus. And hope called her name. Maybe you don't understand what's going on here today. Maybe this is all new to you. But what is happening here today is that hope is in the house. And there has been people that he's been calling their name. There's a world that doesn't care about you. There's a world that doesn't care less whether you live or whether you die. But there's a God that's saying, Sarah, I see you. I know you and I love you. There's a God that's looking down saying, I know exactly what situation you're in. It's calling your name. That's my prayer here today. I don't want you to hear me. If you leave here and say, I heard Brother Tim, I did something wrong. What I want you to hear today is the voice of Jesus calling your name. It won't be, may not be a physical thing that you can hear, but a tug on your heart. And what I'm asking, this has been a long service, I'm asking you, come forward. If hope is calling your name, your hope is not dead. There's a Savior who lives. There's a Savior who sets free. There's a Savior that resurrects. There's a Savior that loves you and cares for you. Come. Hope is calling your name. Don't sit in your pew. Respond to him this morning. Respond to him. Even if you're sitting out there and you're saying, this isn't for me, come anyway. Let's pray. Let's gather around this altar and begin to pray for one another. Hope is coming alive in this place. Give him a chance. Go ahead and sing again. And I encourage you to come. Praise God. We need a new. Hallelujah. We need you, Jesus. And the voice of God is going to speak to you. This is the first fruits. This is the beginning. <laughs> this is the start. You think it's the end. Uh-uh. Your story just begun. God has so much for you. Continue in Him. Continue worshiping Him. Continue seeking Him. Just listening to somebody today told me they got the Holy Ghost at home. You can go home and get the Holy Ghost. In fact, I encourage you, go home and get the Holy Ghost. God loves you. If there's one more. Pastor's already in the baptismal his pants are already wet there's one more water's warm go through this week looking for him go through this week looking for him he wants to minister to you God bless you God bless you God loves you if you want to continue worshiping you want to continue praying you do so you got to go understand